this video, we're going to take a look at the new Usebox open source do it yourself 8 bit video game console. I'll give you my impressions of the kit and some examples of what this thing can do. The Usebox is built around an Atmega 644 microcontroller. The front has two ports for Super Nintendo style controllers. On the rear, it has two RCA jacks for audio and composite video, and also an S-Video port. It also has space on the board for an optional MIDI in jack, which could be fun if you're musically inclined. The cool thing about this is it's totally open source. So once you get tired of playing the games that come with it, you can try your hand at programming your own. And even if programming's not your thing, there's a whole community of people playing with this, so content should come out on a regular basis. I purchased the kit at adafruit.com for $74.95 US dollars. The kit is called the Usebox Starter Kit, and it comes with almost everything you need to get started. When you open the kit, you'll find a bag of parts, a printed circuit board, one Super Nintendo style controller, an RCA audio video cable, and a 256 megabyte memory card preloaded with games. One thing this kit doesn't include is a 9 volt power supply, so you'll have to pick one of these up yourself. I got this one on the Adafruit site for about $7. I also picked up a second controller for two player games. Here's the contents of the parts bag, which includes an Atmega 644 microcontroller. The good news is nothing was missing. Here's a closer look at the printed circuit board. It's a good quality board and all the component locations are marked. The board uses one surface mount chip, which comes pre-soldered, which is good news for beginners. Now let's talk about assembling the kit. This kit is well thought out and fairly easy to construct with a few minor exceptions. The Usebox website has a very detailed construction guide with lots of pictures which is also great for beginners. As long as you follow the guide carefully, you should be successful. There's a couple of things about this project that may trip up a beginner if they're not careful. First of all, some of the soldering pads on the printed circuit board are a little small. I found that using a slightly sharper soldering iron tip helped me get to them. So if you're a beginner, you may want to go pick up some sharper tips for your soldering iron before starting this project. Here's another thing a beginner should watch out for. This kit contains a lot of different values of resistors, many of which have very similar color codes. You want to make sure that you correctly identify each resistor before you install it. If you're not 100% sure, use your multimeter set on resistance to measure the value of the resistor. Another component you want to be careful installing is the memory card holder. Make sure that when you place it, the pins at the front are correctly lined up with the pads on the board. Now you can solder these two tabs to the board to hold the component in place. Make sure it doesn't move as you're soldering and the pins stay lined up to the board. Once these are in place, you can solder the front tabs. These pins are very small, so your sharp tip soldering iron will really come in handy. Another part you want to be careful with is the plastic control ports. If you apply too much heat with the soldering iron, they will melt, so be careful. The first thing you have to do is make sure the part is firmly held in place for soldering. I'm using a small clamp to do this. Now touch the soldering iron to the pad only and let it heat up for a couple of seconds. Now bring the soldering iron forward to heat up the pin and start applying solder. It should flow freely and create a good joint. Now do the same thing to the pin on the opposite side. 
Notice I'm using a slightly larger soldering iron tip and some thicker solder for this. Now just continue down the line with the same technique. You want to make sure you get good joints because the solder is the only thing holding the controller ports to the board. I think overall this project is doable by a beginner, but if you have zero soldering experience, you're going to want to practice a bit first. Now let's take a look at some of the games. The use box comes with a memory card filled with games ranging from demos to fully completed projects. As you can see from this Arkanoid clone, it is capable of some pretty good graphics. Overall, this game is pretty faithful to the original and gives you a good idea of what the used box is capable of. Now let's look at this really well done Donkey Kong clone. As you can see, they totally nailed the sound and the feel of this game. There's also a pretty good version of Frogger. Load Runner was one of my favorite games back in the day, and this version's pretty good. Of course, no system's complete without Tetris, and Megatris is a great version for the use box. And to keep with the retro theme, there's a version of Pac-Man. And finally, this version of Pango gives you an example of the music playback capabilities of the use box. Overall, I would say this is a great system for $75. If you're ambitious, you can learn a lot about programming and game construction, but at the very least, you can play some fun retro games. As far as building the kit, if you're a beginner with some soldering experience, you should be able to put this together. So I suggest you pick one of these up for yourself and have some fun. Visit notesandvolts.com for more tutorials and reviews, and once again, thanks for watching.